place is crazy. In December of 2016, President Obama set aside 1.3 million acres of federal land in southeast Utah to be known as the Bears Ears National Monument. To protect the land, Obama used the Antiquities Act, the same law Teddy Roosevelt used to preserve the Grand Canyon. This road is insane. After hearing about the new monument, I asked a friend to join me on a trip to Utah. We just wanted to see what Bears Ears National Monument was all about. There, we discovered an ongoing political battle that epitomizes the strange culture war sweeping America. We all have places that we hold sacred, either as an individual or as a people itself. Navajo people have clans, and my maternal clan is Batani. And in those canyons and in that area, that's where a lot of Batanis had lived through the ages. And so as a person, as an individual, I hold that sacred. So I'm here with my friend Jake here in Utah in Bears Ears National Monument. And we're at the start of Honaker Trail, which is a historic uh, route built during gold mining days down to the San Juan River. So we're gonna head down the Honaker Trail. Climb down to San Juan. Should be a series of switchbacks down the bottom of the canyon. And uh, then we have these pack rafts that we have on our back, a couple extra pounds, and uh, we'll get those inflated and head down the river for a couple days. Get some class two, class three rapids. Looking forward to that. And uh, hike out Slickhorn Canyon. But Hank, what? I'm new to this whole uh, hiking nature thing. What's, what's that giant uh, black cloud over there? What's, what's that all about? You can see over there, it looks like there's a huge thunderstorm on the horizon. We thought it was going away from us, then the wind changed. We're not exactly sure how it's going to affect the trip. You said you were going to take care of everything, Hank. I, I tried. I tried. The Bears Ears region, it's a place where our history is documented on the ruins and it's where our ancestors left their footprints for us. There's all these burial sites and there's a lot of threats including like grave robbing, looting, vandalism. There's been a lot of pottery sheds and now all you can see is bits of it. So that's why since 80 years ago, Native Americans have been trying to ask to protect the Bears Ears region. Hacker Trail so far has been uh, a little challenging, pretty steep descent, a lot of loose rock and scree, and some you know big step downs. But the views are amazing, and uh, we're making good time. It's been known that the Bears Ears region was in need of protection and nothing really pushed that forward until five sovereign tribal nations united as one. And it all originated from Utah de Nevakea, a nonprofit that elevated Native American voices. President Obama officially declared 1.3 million acres of land in San Juan County as the Bears Ears National Monument. The declaration spurred huge criticism from many Utah leaders, but members of Utah's Native communities, well, they're celebrating. It took, I think it's almost more than seven years, close, pretty close to eight years. From the, from the time that people started actually really, really coming together and started working on it. And once the end of the Obama's term, uh, he signed that uh, designation, then we were all in total awe and in celebration. This is the first time in history where Native Americans have stepped up to do something about having a voice. Once you start walking those trails, once you start getting on top of some of those mesas, you will see life out there. You can hear almost the echoes of the chants of, of our past people that, that walked through the canyons and, and stood on top of the rocks. We've seen some clouds in the sky and uh, they just started to open up on us. Luckily, we had uh, just walked about 100 feet past a natural rock cave. So instead of walking in the rain, we thought we'd tuck in under the cave, wait it out, hopefully it won't be too long. 
it's such an exposed land. And then when you see a natural feature like this, it covers you from rain, protects you from the wind, great place to sleep for the night. You just have to assume that people have been tucking into here, resting, sleeping, eating for thousands of years, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, I agree. That's I, that's what's cool about this is like you can imagine the native people who were here thousands of years before us enjoying the same shelters from the rain that we are now. I think that's super cool. Totally. Wow, it's really really opening up now. It's really pouring. <laughs> oh, jeez. We're gonna have to live here forever, probably. I'm glad we're dry. <laughs> <laughs> we're so wimpy. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about Hanagar is that it's very steep and heads basically straight down a nearly vertical cliff down to the San Juan River. Uh, fortunately, it's a pretty well-maintained trail. It's dug into the side, but there's a lot of rocks. Definitely places to slip because it was raining. So it's a little exciting. Okay, we're almost to the bottom. Very exciting. We're gonna set up camp down there, uh, inflate our pack rafts, and then in the morning, we're gonna head down the San Juan River. So it's nighttime, we're in the tent at the Honaker camp. Tomorrow we're gonna go rafting. I'm really excited for the paddling. I just hope it's not too cold, because uh, I don't want to freeze to death. I just hope you don't snore tonight. is tohonnand, meaning over a certain amount, or a lot of water. When I was little, my grandma, when I would visit her, she would always say that she went through a big body of water. And as a little kid, not knowing the language that well yet, I, met, I thought she meant she went and crossed the uh, great ocean. But she crossed the river and went into a place called Shashja which is bear's ears, where they would pick pin gun nuts. And then the men foot will go over there and get some uh, uh, firewood. So we're about to set off uh, on the San Juan River today uh, for the first time in our pack raft. So the water level is pretty high today, so the river's moving pretty fast. Uh, but I think it should be exciting, and uh, I think we're gonna have a good time. Jake, thoughts? Let's do it. I come from a very traditional family. My grandfather is actually a well-known Navajo medicine man by the name of Billy Yellow. And growing up, we live on the reservation and it's just all dry land and we don't have any resources in the area. We're kind of just shoved in an area with no access. So for us to get our resources, we always traveled up towards Cedar Mesa and um, Bears Ears is just in our backyard. We can see it from outside of our doorstep. Here we are flying down the San Juan River in our pack rafts in Bears Ears uh, National Monument. Uh, it's a really cool place. The canyon walls are huge. The weather is perfect today, sunny and warm. Uh, we're just having a great time. <laughs> I got pummeled with a wave on that one. Yeah. Wave yeah. <laughs> uh, to 
make me think that tomorrow might be more exciting than I was expecting. It could be pretty exciting. <laughs> Trash, be a good steward. Found it. It's a uh, Natty Light. It was still uh, closed. I'm gonna give it a shot to see if it's uh, still good. Oh, yeah, it's like Natty Light, just like I remember. I want some too. No, you don't. This is all mine. Bear's Ears in Navajo is pronounced as Shashja in the Buttes symbolize bear's ears, and I've heard different stories from each of the tribes, stories that go all the way to our creation stories on how those ears specifically were placed there. You can see the overhanging cliff has just been eaten away by the river. It's just a reminder that this whole canyon was carved out over, what, millions of years? Once this was just a little stream cut into a field. Now it's, you know, a thousand foot deep canyon. It's a crazy time scale. It's a reminder of how small we are in the grand scheme of it. So we're here in John's Canyon. We hiked up um, above our campsite and it's a really cool swimming hole. And you can see amazing views of the huge canyon walls all around. It's just an example of one of the really cool uh, special things that we found here. This is just a beautiful place and a really interesting trip. So look, this is the way this works. Hank's in charge of logistics. He's supposed to do all the research, look at the map, understand things, and he didn't do that. <laughs> I have the map of our trip. I know how far we're going. I just didn't mark the map with the locations of the rapids. No. He's, he's very proud of himself. He calculated the correct number of tortillas for the trip, but he has no idea where the class three rapids are that we may encounter at any point on today's trip. Two tortillas for lunches, one tortilla for breakfast. Oh shit, are you okay? I just flipped my boat. We went through some uh, some rapids like we've been through before, just some waves. Tried to do an eddy turn, rotate around to see Hank. I don't know, I guess I didn't lean enough into the turn. Boat rolled. Pretty exciting out here. Now I gotta make sure I don't fall in. For the Navajos, it's all about preservation. When you go to the mountain, there's a mountain song and a mountain prayer to give offering. And when people go out and do foraging, they only pick what they need. When they cross the river, they give offering to the river to go through. I think it's really important that the younger generation identify and self-reflect on where we come from and reconnect back to the land. So as they get older, they feel that spiritual connection to the area.
As I'm flying down river, I get separated from my pack raft and I start panicking. I'm afraid I'm gonna lose the pack raft. I'm also afraid that I'm gonna hit another rapid and I'm gonna be in big trouble. I realize that I'm gonna lose my raft if I don't do something. So I swim back out into the middle of the river to get in position to grab it. Then, when I see the raft floating toward me, I can feel my stress melt away and I relax. The scenery is stunning. The river is just uh, such a pleasure to paddle. And the canyons that we get to see and explore are really just unmatched anywhere else. Yeah, sometimes it's challenging, but hiking through Bears Ears National Monument and paddling the San Juan River, I really feel connected to something bigger than myself. We just finished day three and we landed at Slickhorn Canyon. Now we have to break down the boats, get them packed up, um, load our backpacks back up, and we're gonna hike a couple miles into the canyon for our campsite for the night. Beautiful. I wonder who the people are who don't support the monument. There are people who aren't happy about Bears Ears becoming a national monument. I'm a, a cattle rancher, and we are opposed to the president using his Antiquities Act to create this national monument. The polls show that over 60% of Utah citizens support Bears Ears National Monument. Utah politicians seem concerned that it will put an end to oil and gas drilling and mining there. There's a lot of concern about not being able to, uh, uh, for energy development in some of these areas. Yeah. 1.35 million acres, bigger than the state of Delaware? Are you kidding me? It's one of the biggest land grabs in the history of the United States. And it was done, this midnight monument, in the waning hours of the Obama administration. I just hope and pray that Donald Trump, the president-elect himself, on day one will take this thing down. The previous administration used a 100-year-old law known as the Antiquities Act to unilaterally put millions of acres of land and water under strict federal control. Part of our laws are being challenged right now, the Antiquities Act. The Antiquities Act does not give the federal government unlimited power to lock up millions of acres of land and water. That's why today I'm signing this order and directing Secretary Zinke to end these abuses and return control to the people. Not only dismantling the monument, but they want to go further beyond that of either doing away with the act or shrink the strength of the act. I believe that all Americans should not allow that to happen because this is, this is the United States history. We can't just erase portions of it because we want to, because we can. That's not, that's not right. We've taken historic action to eliminate wasteful regulations. Tremendously positive things are going to happen on that incredible land, the likes of which there is nothing more beautiful anywhere in the world. But now tremendously positive things will happen. This whole fight about this national monument kind of lost focus um, since the executive order. I, I, I think he's a tribal leader, how yeah. are you? <laughs> When are you going to meet with the tribal leaders? It's kind of unfair that you've only met with them for one hour, sir. Is there a reason why you're not listening to them more? Zinky, are you going to visit be with the tribes more? nice. I'm so nice. Be nice. Oh, okay. Don't be rude. Thank you. After months of review, Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke today made the recommendation that President Trump shrink the boundaries of Bears Ears National Monument. I think when the tribes united in succeeded through that government-to-government -government relationship to get a designation and to have a voice over our ancestral lands uh, really surprised the non-Native American communities. They always had it their way, and this is the first time Native Americans have it their way. Those of us who live on the reservation were completely excluded from the process and it's always been that way 
I feel that our voices are always ignored. Way long before pre-Columbus, natives had roamed this place. And they call it Mother Earth because the Earth doesn't belong to us, we belong to Mother Earth. We as a people should all appreciate what Mother Nature has given us. We're already approaching. What we figured out is that you can see how there are these like layers of rock and you have a kind of a flattish area then you have a vertical cliff area and we slowly climb in elevation until we get to a vertical cliff area and in each one of those transition points is where we've either approached an impassable waterfall or a smaller waterfall that we can kind of like step up over so we don't know what's coming up here You know, funny enough, we uh, we ran into a woman at the beginning of the trail, and she kind of gave us some uh, cryptic advice, which uh, now in hindsight makes perfect sense. At the first pool, go to the right. At the second pool, go to the left. And we were like, crazy woman! <laughs> so we went past the first pool, we went to the right, and we got to the second pool, and we went to the right. <laughs> and it was sketchy, and with backpacks, and it wasn't gonna happen. So then we checked out the left. Turns out the left is a, is a cakewalk. Much so easier. That, that's where we're heading right now. <laughs> On the way. Feels like I'm trying to climb with a boat in my bag. Weird. You know what you should not carry because it's too heavy? <laughs> a boat in your bag. <laughs> All right. I think we only have like 100 more of those to go. when the uh, U.S. Cavalry came because it was ordered to gather all the Navajos. Well, there were some people that went into the canyons of Bears Ears to seek refuge and to seek uh, survival in that area. We're here. Uh, in Slickhorn Canyon, and it's a uh, much harder route finding than we expected. Uh, we hit another dead end in the canyon with a big sheer wall where a waterfall was. So now we're going this, up the side of this rock face. How's it, how's it look, uh, Jake? Yeah, so uh, looks like uh, right about up here, I mean, what do we climb, about 150 feet? Kind of steep, but I think we can hike across it. And hopefully that'll get us past the uh, the kind of impassable portion of the canyon. One of our great leaders had lived because uh, he never went to the long walk of the Navajos where they were marched down to Fort Sumner. And a lot of these people had remained in these canyons and these mountains over here. They've never went on that big march. They felt safe in those canyons and those mountains. We had to climb 150 feet up loose rock and cactus. So it's like if the loose rock didn't slip, <laughs> and then it was the dirt and cacti. But uh, yeah, so we climbed up the top of that and then started traversing. But it was pretty sketchy because, you know, every other foothold would kind of slide out from underneath you. Yeah, I got into full panic mode when we were on this high scree slope up there. But we made it and now our campsite should be fairly close, I think. Hopefully it's not on the other side of another I hope it's canyon. not one more of those before the campsite. <laughs> sweet view we got here. We didn't really have any sunsets the whole trip because we were so deep in the, uh, the San Juan River, the canyon. And um, now that we've come out a little bit and we've got a kind of a straight shot, I guess due west, we're getting to see a nice sunset. Nice way to end the day. Mother Nature has created all the natural colors that there is on this place. And with the sunlight coming through the shadows of the clouds, you 
see all the red cliffs, the white cliffs, the red sand, and the green of the valleys, they all come alive. And it has been like that for generations, for years and years. And it will remain that way if the monument stays that way. And once we start, people start mining, people start uh, oil jewel welling, all of that's going to change. And it's, 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 it's going to disrupt what we call sacred. We're leaving super early in the morning this morning um, because we were traveling slow yesterday. So now we're gonna head up Candy Moor and uh, eventually make it um, to the narrows of the canyon and then head back to the car. We just came out of uh, Slickhorn Canyon. Jake just yelled that he sees the car that we parked four days ago. Getting out of Slickhorn is not easy. It's a real adventure, but we made it. Our trip made me love the land in Bear's Ears, but it was the time I spent talking to Cynthia and Woody that really made me understand the value of the area's cultural history. I think if there's any chance of healing the destructive political divide in the United States, it's by sitting down person to person and talking until we all understand each other a little bit better. What I hope for the future is that we are able to utilize our ancestral lands. We are able to educate our younger generation in really understanding who we are and where we come from. I hope moving forward with this national monument is a healing process for our people. I hope the monument will be upheld. I hope so. You can see our tracks are still out there, native tracks are still out there, and we just want future generations to see that there have been people here. There have been people of various cultures that were here. A hundred years from now, we want that to be, remain the same to where that will be an outdoor classroom that we will appreciate from now till the end of time, undisturbed.